Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome back to Alien Protocols. As promised, here is a video with some of uh, what I believe are the best <clears throat> uh, answers I can provide. And these are based on uh, several different sources. <clears throat> One source being several insiders that I am uh, very familiar with. And um, I have not broken any, and I will not be breaking any um, confidentiality agreements or uh, any of that in the revealing of this information. This information is being revealed through different sources uh, other than those. Um, it's also from some esoteric explorations, meaning astrals and remote viewings. And it's also uh, with the assistance of reductionist logic. So, here are some of the answers, gang. As best <clears throat> that I know them, take them uh, with a grain of salt. Um, I certainly am not the uh, final word in any of this stuff. So much of this stuff is uh, just uh, immersed in mystery and answers that you think you may have, especially concerning an advanced intelligence, can always be different forms of deception or um, planned um, illusion, etc. Plus, there's a lot of other different factors that come involved here. So, now that I've got the disclaimer out of the way, let's dive in. Question. Are we being visited by non-Earth origin intelligences? Yes, we are. Intelligence is plural. More than one. Uh, my understanding, specifically from the knowledge that I have, is that there are several different races uh, that uh, work together in something called a council. And uh, the council is a group of around seven different types of species and I th my belief is that these are mostly second generation life forms and we cannot truly know with you know ultra advanced intelligences what we are dealing with it's very hard to make any solid conclusions <clears throat> plus I also believe that we are being uh, visited by outsiders from outside of that group. It's a very big universe or omniverse and um, a lot of different things can be taking place. Um, if you remember, there are some wood carvings from, um, oh, I'm forgetting what country it was, but like 1590s, two different sets of wood carvings where they had uh, one I think is in <clears throat> like Germany and the other one I think is in like Sweden maybe. And um, I feel terrible. I can't remember exactly where they are, but you guys will know what I'm talking about. And if you do a quick Google search, you'll see. And they're separated by over 10 years of time between them. And these uh, talk about incidents that happened in the sky, major incidents where it seemed like different craft were fighting each other and even crashing on the ground. And this seems to be um, an effort by, from my understanding, the Council of, quote, Biologicals, to counter a uh, non-biological threat to Earth. Um, they have been visiting here for hundreds of years. The council, we believe, has uh, uh, been involved with Earth for as long as humanity has been around, and possibly much, much longer. Um, are there bases on Earth? Yes. There are over 12 bases in many different parts of the world. Um, many are underwater. Um, I've spoken about some of these different locations. Um, there are also installations, I guess you could say, off Earth that are very nearby. Um, the moon, Mars, some moons of um, Jupiter, Saturn... Um, 
why are <clears throat> UFOs so different throughout UFO history? And even currently, why are there so many different types of UFOs? Well, they're on missions. They're not just randomly sprinkled around just to condition humanity to their presence. They're doing things. And um, I've spoken about this before, that to an advanced civilization, data is the most precious thing. Knowledge is the most precious thing, more precious than any element, diamonds, gold, platinum, any of that stuff. Knowledge is power. And life forms are one of the densest forms of data in the universe. So a tremendous amount can be learned from life. And not just the life forms itself, but the synergistic biospheres, uh, interactions with each other, and many different factors. So um, that's part of the reason why there's so many craft and so many different types. There's different mission-based um, craft. But also, they are doing positive things for us. They are reducing threats and helping us with certain other factors. And um, those requirements of those specific missions, outside of the data gathering ones, require different shapes and forms. Um, <clears throat> also, they only show the level of technology needed for their mission and no more. Although their technological savvy and ability is much, 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 much greater. So that's just a logical efficiency kind of uh, thought. Um, why are they obsessed with water? Well, they're not really obsessed with water. If you think about Earth, it's just a great hiding place. It's a great place to put bases. And uh, even, and don't think that these are like bases on the bottom. Like, you know, there's a bubble on the bottom of the, you know, you know on the sea floor. These are even sub-seafloor bases. As time has passed, um, <clears throat> human technology has become greater and greater, and our abilities become greater and greater, and they respond to that. Um, are there interdimensionals? <clears throat> well, this is a very complex question. Oftentimes when craft disappear, um, people will be like, oh, it's interdimensional. They're going into other dimensions or the spaces in between. Um, but... The reality is there's many different factors that can cause a craft to disappear. We know that they have camouflage abilities and um, are able to evade visual detection, radar, and many other forms through the material on the surface of the craft. And even Luis Elizondo has spoken about this. And it has been released as one of the parameters of um, uh, the discoveries made by the ATIP program and all of those military cases that they explored. But there's a very, very, very small number of true interdimensionals, far, far less than people think. Why South America? Well, if you think about what I was saying before about uh, data being the most valuable thing and life forms being the densest form of data, um, South America and the rainforests and all of that um, has been an ongoing incredible interest to them. And so, uh, like with the Nimitz case, when they saw the small Tic Tac flying over the other larger saucer under the water, um, why would they need to get so close to each other? They could transfer information many other ways. It would have to be something physical. So, that's what it was. It was a transfer of physical samples. Um, <clears throat> um, why are they so interested in nukes? This is a very important question. They know stuff that we don't know. You have to accept that basic reality. And they know that a very high percentage of intelligent, technologically advanced life forms like us, a very high percentage of them destroy themselves with nukes. So they're very concerned about this. And it's not just uh, guessing. They're not guessing. This is from a tremendous amount of information that they have, that they know a very, very, very high percentage 
of technologically advanced races destroy themselves with nuclear weapons. They're not guessing, gang. They're trying to warn us of something based on very intense knowledge they have. Um, how much do they know about us? More than we know about ourselves. <clears throat> it's very funny when I hear scientists and others talk about, well, we need to learn how to communicate with them and, you know, uh, uh, we could speak to them, uh, make a connection with uh, the basic prime numbers or through hydrogen or through some of these other basic laws of physics and find some basic... They know every language on this planet. They know all of this stuff. They're not stupid. Um, don't presume that they are stupid. Um, they know more about us than we know about ourselves. Um, what ET races are there, uh, specifically? There's, um, quite a few of the ones that you guys are familiar with, some very humanoid types. There are some very, quote, gray types that look, you know, bipedal, very much like us, um, in our symmetry, um, but different forms of kind of grays. And there's even some that, uh, seem to be kind of insectoid and, <clears throat> One that apparently, uh, I've never seen it, but has four uh, legs and two arms. <clears throat> kind of like a water bear. Um, how is this data that they collect sent back to the primary civilization? If a lot of these creatures and craft are second generation creations. <clears throat> well... Light is obviously too slow, but their craft are able to uh, bend space-time in a way that allows them to go faster than light. So they actually literally carry the data backwards. So some of the smaller craft deliver some of the samples and data to the larger craft. The larger craft deliver to larger craft. There are storage areas, and they wait till it reaches a certain height of information before they um, send it back. And they also have some redundancies to ensure the safety of uh, the data and the information. Uh, so it's not through light, it's done through craft. Do they have weaknesses? Yes, there are many weaknesses. I really probably shouldn't go into them here, but there are some actually some surprisingly logical weaknesses that they would have and that we could... Um, we could uh, exploit for either communication or warfare. And because it can go either way, I prefer not to share those here. Um, is there really anti-gravity? Of course there is. There's multiple different ways um, to go faster than the speed of light. Um, at least four that uh, I have been exposed to in my research. Um, are they helping us? Yes. They are definitely helping us already. Um, can anyone contact them? No, not anyone. Only certain types and groups are allowed to make contact, I believe, um, at this current time. Um, there are a lot more questions and a lot more answers. These are just the ones as best I know them. So take it all with a grain of salt, and um, <clears throat> it's a wonderful time to be alive. We are in disclosure, and as we get more answers, they only open up more questions. I love you guys. Another answer video coming up very soon. Let me know the questions you'd like to find out answers to. Much love. Oh, hey, please support the channel, too. You can do that on PayPal or Patreon, and uh, we love you. Thank you.